probably knew that. Well, so we're trying to figure out where are the volcanoes there <coughs> in the world of the volcanoes. Well, actually, most common, guess what? Most volcanoes are in the ocean, yeah. Many were still submerged. This is mainly because, of course, the Earth has got, well, 70% water. So some of these underwater volcanoes have been observed directly by scientists traveling the ocean floor in submarines. And there are a few places where these ocean volcanoes get above sea level, notably Hawaii and Iceland. But many of them are still underwater, OK? And so here are some pictures of some volcanoes underwater, so to speak. This is them erupting above the surface of the water. And this is one right down here, for example, where it's made an island. So we can see um, the formation of an island right here. Also, there's volcanoes on land, as you're probably well. Now, these are the much more dangerous than the ocean ones. As you continue through the chapter, you'll come to understand why these are more dangerous. So we haven't really gotten into that. Um, volcanoes are found in lots of places in the United States. In the United States, uh, the Cascade Mountains, Alaska, Hawaii, and Wyoming. Those are where we find uh, lots of volcanoes. Uh, some are caused by the rifting of land. Remember that rift valleys, we talked about that a little bit ago, are formed when two plates are moving away from each other. This thins the crust and allows magma a shorter path to the surface. Uh, the Rift Valley of Africa is one of these rare occasions on the Earth. Okay. Now here's a very important thing to understand. There's something called the ring of fire. When we try and just plot a graph of where are all the volcanoes in the world, we discover that they are surrounding um, continental plates. And so you kind of see a ring of fire. You want to get a picture of that. I've got a better picture later. So it's a uh, fire is a, uh, the ring of fire is along the edge of the Pacific Ocean and is so named due to the high concentration of volcanoes and earthquakes around the ocean basin. And you can kind of read this. Um, it's because the area is mostly a subduction zone or where one plate is sliding beneath the other. And here is uh, some of those uh, volcanoes that we see in, um, in America. That, uh, and you kind of see the kind of a pattern. This is the western part of the United States. They kind of form a line, if you see right here. And that's part of this whole ring of fire. And here are actually pictures of them, as you can see. And here's the classic one. Everyone talks about Mount St. Helens because it's the one that uh, last erupted dramatically. Okay, and you can see, I'm not sure these are that critical, but we've got some different uh, 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 volcanoes that are uh, in the United States. California, different states. Now here, this is probably the classic picture, the one you want to get. And probably, I probably should have zoomed in on the Pacific Ocean, but the ring of fire starts right through here. Each of these dots is a volcano. So over here, but then of course this is, comes over here. You can kind of see how this makes a ring. So it's kind of more like that, if you will, to kind of join them together. We've also got volcanoes, lots of different places. You can see some that are underwater here. There are more underwater um, than are above water. We even have ones right here that are in the water along that section of the ring of fire. All right. All right, now let's talk about a few more things. Um, let's talk about a hot spot. What the heck is a hot spot? Well, a hot spot is a, uh, occur over a fixed location on the Earth's surface, typically causing a volcano to form. They can be um, in the ocean, along mid-ocean ridges, or in the middle of plates. Hawaii and Yellowstone are both hot spots. If you've been to Yellowstone, some of you probably have. In Yellowstone, that's a hot spot as, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, sort of the crust is thin and the, ma the hot magma that's under the Earth is, uh, comes to the surface. They're rare. But when compared with other volcanoes on the Earth, your book talks about the formation of Hawaiian Islands and the Emperor Seamount chain being over fixed hotspots. So there's actually much research showing that they are not fixed. I'm going through these fast, but I think you can uh, pause and copy. So um, there's still much discussion about this idea, but much of the evidence points to the drifting hotspots rather than a fixed one. All right. Typically, the hotspot volcanoes in the ocean are fairly quiet when they erupt, like Hawaii and Iceland. But continental ones can erupt very violently, causing much death and destruction. Uh, we'll be seeing some more about those later. Now here's a picture of Hawaii in the hot spot. You kind of see how you have hot lava uh, traveling. And an interesting thing is that it looks like it's actually moving. So if you find, here's Hawaii, and we can actually find this line right here. And this is the hot spot as actually the plates have moved. And as the plates move, the hot spot actually has remained constant, but the plates over the top have moved. So it turns out that this island right here, the big island, is the most recent island. And these are older as you go this way. That's because the hot spot has been moving um, or the whole plate itself underneath has been moving in that direction. Now let's watch a short video clip about hotspot. The Hawaiian Islands are thousands of miles away from the nearest plate boundary. Yet this area is among the most volcanically active areas in the world. Scientists believe a hotspot exists in the Earth's mantle below Hawaii. Hot spots are areas where magma has found its way through the Earth's crust, emerging on the ocean floor, where it becomes hardened by the cold ocean water. 
more magma follows, adding to the formation of an underwater volcanic dome. The dome becomes larger and larger with each eruption and may, after thousands of years, rise above sea level. Every island in the Hawaiian chain, as well as many others around the world, were formed in this way. Hot spots are stationary. The one beneath Hawaii has existed here for over 70 million years. But as we have seen, the Earth's plates are not stationary. As this plate moves, it carries the newly formed island with it. As more magma rises, it starts to build another dome all over. This arrow shows the direction of movement of the plate carrying the Hawaiian Islands. The area glowing in red is the hot spot. The islands farthest away from the hot spot are the oldest. It is the island directly above the hot spot, the so-called Big Island, which is the youngest and most active. Wow, that was very cool, wasn't it? All right, one, a uh, couple more things here to kind of tie this up here. Let's talk about something called a hydrothermal vents. They're amazingly complex areas on the ocean floor where magma is very near the surface. These vents have an amazing diverse community of tube worms, mollusks, shrimps, lots of different critters. And when you study these critters, um, it is um, an amazing thing, very unique community. So let's take a look. We have these hydrothermal vents, and these are pictures of where they are, like right here, etc., and right here. And we see some amazing things in these hydrothermal vents. Let me show you some pictures of them. Oh, actually, one more thing. Another possible benefit of these is that it creates a lots of mineral resources. So lots of um, people are thinking, well, maybe I can like mine that stuff, you know. But it creates some interesting um, life forms down there. And here, this is at the deep ocean floor. And there's no sunlight right here. Most energy for the world comes from sunlight, right? For you and me and what we eat and drink and whatever, um, you know, plants. But these are, they get their energy from these hydrothermal vents. So, you know, you got the world and then you've got the hot lava come out rising up. And then under the ocean, under the ocean, we see um, these amazing communities of these critters that are deep under the world. All right, one last thing. Let's talk about the Rift Valley of Africa. It is the few land-based, one of the few, um, land-based rift valleys. It's very large in scope and has much to offer in terms of geology. Mount Kilimanjaro is located here, one of the mountains near the equator. It's an interesting thing, it's one of the um, only glaciers that are near the equator because the mountain, well, it's so tall. And so if we look at the Rift Valley of Africa, we see volcanoes. This is just a cool picture of all this stuff right here. And so you can see here, here are some pictures of some of these volcanoes. And uh, you can see they're, they're calderas, which we'll learn about later. And uh, the, the magma chambers, very cool, as you can see, these cool pictures of these uh, right here. And these are, these are just all through the Rift Valley. This is in the Cameroon, some of their volcanoes. You can see very cool pictures here. And this is a lake formed um, in the caldera of a volcano. This is the top of one in Tanzania. Um, and here is, uh, I think this is Kilimanjaro itself, the big one. And you can see a glacier. So that's snow at the equator. And some more pictures right here. These are all part of that Rift Valley of Africa. And here's something that's interesting. One thing that's true in the Rift Valley of Africa is they create this big uh, water um, place. This is called Victoria Falls. It's an amazing place. I wish I could go there and visit. And uh, yeah, I'm not sure I'd do what these guys are doing. That looks like abs this lady is absolutely crazy. But basically, th this, these continents are being pushed apart and it creates the Rift Valley. And then volcanoes can come up in between them. In this case, it also forms some opportunities for some water. And um, so these are the different volcanoes in the Rift Valley of Africa. So, folks, that kind of concludes this podcast and our introduction. So the nice thing about this is all you need to do is take notes and good notes.